Hey everyone, uh, my name is Nick Sensky, and I teach architecture here at Iowa State University. Uh, Rob asked me to uh, show you a little bit about how I use Miro um, in my classes for uh, project-based learning. Uh, so um, I want to keep this video short, so I'm going to uh, just jump right in. So this is the Miro interface, and I'm already logged in. Um, the it's a web-based application. And it's called, and it's found at Miro.com. Uh, this is, it's a, it's like a virtual whiteboard intended for team-based learning, team-based collaboration. Um, it's really robust. So you, you, you log in, um, you, you kind of build a team. So you invite, you know, students or members of your team. And that's actually what's nice about it is you can, you can invite anything from one student to the entire class. Um, the education program, which I'm a member of, and I'll send you a link to um, that you can apply for for free, allows you um, at this time up to 100 users. So it's really useful even for a couple sections of a class, um, as long as your class isn't too large. So just really briefly, I'm going to go ahead and just create like a new uh, the board, just to even give you a sense of the interface. Um, and again, it's really speedy. It works on multiple devices like your phone or your tablet uh, or your 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 PC or your Mac. Um, it has all these built-in kind of templates for things. You can do mind mapping. You can do you know card-based stuff. Um, there's all kinds of things you know built in. You can also create a personal library um, if you've got that far. I tend to just go ahead and start with like a blank you know page. Um, and it's very intuitive. Um, you can do things. Um, what I actually frequently do is um, I will lay out um, frames, and a frame is a is a sort of spatial like container where someone can put um, like an artifact, like an image, or even a PDF. Uh, it, it'll do multi-page PDFs, which is very nice. Um, and I kind of give spaces for my students to lay things out, um, and I'll and I'll put their names on them or something, or I will give them space to put their names. Um, and that allows you the ability to kind of pre-stage some things. Um, you can do different diagramming things, like you can draw lines, you can annotate uh, with with different tools. You know, it's very fluid. A lot of times I'll actually use a tablet uh, that's on a different account uh, to actually draw in real time and then see it on my on my on my large screen. Um, that's maybe kind of overkill. You can also drop in comments. And comments are special because you can actually tag a specific user and you can put, you know, like emojis and things in them. And, and, and that's kind of attributed to you. Um, they can also respond to comments and you can actually build a thread, which is, which is really nice. So all that's built in. Um, you can also just do like a sticky note. And that's just simply a place that you can write, uh, you know, text for things. Um, and so if you have an idea about something or you want someone to look at something, you can leave those persistent, um, you know, notes inside of there. You can you can add text and things. Um, it's a very robust system again, um, and uh, there's just tons of options. And they keep they keep adding stuff like all the time. Um, I'm not even going to scratch the surface of what it's really capable of doing. But you know, in terms of like project based learning, I mean, we're trying to do I think at least in, in terms of trying to catch up to what we were doing in studio based education is to try to replicate the experience of 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 a having the student have a desk for things that they can actually put things on. And that's kind of an example of what I've got here. I have I have a team of students, and you know, at a certain day, they would say, "Okay, here's where I'm at. This is what I'm writing about my project. These are some ideas that we have together." And this allows the two of them to work at a distance together, you know, so they can work in a in a in, in sort of a sort of a shared space. At the same time, I can come into this space and I can give them a desk crit and, and give them updates on their progress. They can share ideas for each other. You can see that the, the project starts to update as they begin to clarify some things. And you'll notice, like, as I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out, like, it's it's extremely well done in terms of the way it handles, like, images and things. Um, it You can put very large images into it and upload them, and they will um, download very quickly. Uh, they can maintain a very high resolution. Uh, it's just a really, it's a really amazing system. And so here, here I had another, I invited another uh, colleague named Roman to come in and, and add some comments into it, uh, you know, like while I was away on another review. And all you do is just send somebody a link to it. So my, you know, my students are working together and they're redlining things. And uh, so anyway, as this project kind of, so they did this as kind of a timeline, you know. Um, the other thing that you can do with it, um, you know, as you kind of get into things is, uh, again, in terms of project-based learning is approximate um, a class pinup. And in this case, we had the students, you know, pin up these, um, 
these kind of exhibits that they were designing for this museum of capitalism. And I, I did the old uh, kind of, uh, you know, pedagogical technique where they could put like a star, you know, next to something that they wanted to talk about. So you would kind of give them time to look at things and then they would take a shape, you know, out of here and place it on the board, you know, and we decided to do stars, like those old fashioned uh, star stickers. And they would kind of put, then they got three stars. I think that was that day. And they were able to put things. And so we would talk about like, you know, this this one seems to have a lot of stars. So let's have this student talk about their work. Um, we also had a thing where we had two groups talk, they would leave comments for another um, project. Um, and that gave us a prompt to respond to. We also had them in pairs so that we could talk about two projects at the same time um, that we thought had kind of an affinity for each other. So again, all this is stuff that we would normally probably do in studio, but we're doing it as a combination of asynchronous, you know, learning um, where they can leave the comments for each other, you know, team-based, you know, small group learning. Uh, where peers can kind of have a discussion, you know, amongst each other. And then finally, like bringing us all together as a class, you know, to have a broader discussion um, about that conversation. And so um, I think, you know, in terms of, you know, this is just a very successful way to do that. Um, I, think, I, think, I think it worked um, extremely well. And then, you know, like among team members, you know, again, uh, this is a more elaborate, you know, team. Um, a couple of my students um, really dug into Miro. Um, they started to kind of construct like a mind map of their project using using the labels and the colors. Um, they were they were looking at a history of capitalism um, that they wanted to to express in their museum. And you can see them actually leaving, you know, diagrams for each other uh, using the shape tools, which is really powerful. You know, um, precedent images, um, different kinds of visual styles that they were interested in you know, leaving, leaving notes for each other. I mean, it's really, really impressive with just the amount of um, persistent information that this can accommodate, um, especially in this virtual space. You know, we, you know, if you have to pin up things on a wall, you know, you have to print things, printing things in color, printing things at scale, you know, it's very expensive. Um, it's a lot of stuff to account for. I think one of the things that the pandemic has really done is really advanced the uh, state of you know virtual education especially in terms of um, this idea of like the pinup um, I think the pinup is still really useful but I think a lot of the stuff that we were relying upon you know expensive prints you know uh, all that stuff color resolution all that you know this has really accelerated that quite a bit so the this was a space that that my my students used for each other that they created to look at things, uh, things of other project that they wanted to discuss, and they just kept it all out in one space. So this was not only a pinup, but kind of like a combination of the pinup and their desk space. That they might be sharing a desk and studio together, and have all of their sort of you know papers and drawings and all the other kind of like detritus that they that they accumulate to develop a project, but with unlimited space, you know, unlimited ability, you know, for these notes. And here it is like a couple of months later and it's all archived. I can come back to it like in a moment's notice um, and I can and I can come back and talk amongst these things. And I think that's extremely valuable, you know, because a lot of the times when the semester is over, you know, we, we would really lose that information. And, you know, that's kind of a problem for the students and, it, and, and also for for the professors, you know, as a way of kind of going back and kind of a postmortem thinking about that process, you know, developing into the new classes at the same time, you know, sharing that process with uh, future groups of students. And so this is just like a treasure trove um, of of information um, going back, you know, just kind of zooming around here, you know, th they were leading lists for each other, you know, um, links to things, you know, um, you know, because it's all embedded. Um, it, it's just it's incredibly, you know, agile. You can you can you can you can link to things. You can embed um, videos, uh, PDFs, that kind of stuff. And if you got this little map here of stuff you can scroll. And I would pop in, and you know, I think I was talking to them about this like site analysis that they were doing. You know, and you can you can you can draw on things. Um, and uh, you know, it's just great. It's uh, in in lieu of the kind of trace paper and that kind of stuff. I think I think it's uh, I think it's really effective. And then last, you know, we would have our reviews actually in a shared Miro space. So here you see we actually organize things according to the review time. 
we would have the pairs and we would actually have a jury come in at the same time. And what's nice about this again, is that like in the virtual wall, you can zoom into things, you know, you get incredible clarity with these images, you know, especially if they're vector based and, uh, and being able to zoom out, um, of things. And, uh, that just facilitates a really nice online review. We can participate in zoom, you know, with somebody hosting the, the, the mural board, or we can, um, give everyone access to Miro and then have them kind of take over with their uh, screen share in Zoom if there's something that they like. But what's nice about this is that like it gives you a lot of control. If there's a detail that you would like to call out, you know, if there's something you want to express with that, you can draw on top of it and it's not destructive. That's also very nice. You know, I used to like to carry um, a red marker with me so that I could draw on my students' drawings. I was kind of notorious for it. Uh, but in here, if I draw on something, it's very easy to erase, um, you know, virtually. Last thing I want to talk about, which is not necessarily project-based learning, but to really give you a sense of, of how powerful it is. You know, I was teaching um, a digital media studio or a, a digital media seminar at the same time and, you know, really getting into Miro. And at the same time, you know, we would have each of the TAs would have a breakout space and they would be on Miro and they would go through with each student and with each group of students and, you know, they would leave comments for each other and they would respond to comments to each other. And we would, um, you know, ask questions of each other and uh, of course draw these red lines. And I think like, this is also really nice in terms of the community, you know, of saying that we can see all this work that we're all working on at the same time. We can have some guidance from the TAs, but then we can come back and talk to all this as, as one large class. Um, and I think that's where we get back to the potential of this. Um, and I think it's uh, I think it's really powerful. So I'm a big fan of Miro. Um, I really appreciate that they've given us access to it for, for free. Um, it'll be interesting to see like what, what happens, you know, um, when it becomes something we might have to host or pay for as, um, as a university program, but the free program, I think that you get, if, if it's not educational, I believe you get three boards. Um, but then once you get more than that, you you're able to view them, but you're not able to edit them. Um, and you know, that might work still for, um, for most of us. Uh, but I, I really enjoy the platform. Um, and I like how, even though it allows us to capture some of the things that we've been doing, uh, in our studios for project-based learning, I think there are things that, you know, being digital, uh, really benefits us. Um, you know, again, just the scope and the scale of this and the ability to capture all this information without worrying about where it goes or how long it lives and the ability for so many people to look at it, I think is a really kind of a leap forward um, from what we were able to do, uh, you know, uh, you know, before the pandemic. So I think there are a few things that are going to be sticky about this and um, that I'm going to carry forward um, even when we're like back to meeting in person. Um, Okay, thanks for listening to me. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, you've got my email address or Rob will share it with you. Um, but thank you for your time.